My name is Jackie and I'm the CEO and Chief Product Obsessor here at Maylove. Today we address the question, do I need to worry about the stability of niacinamide in my serum? The good news is that niacinamide is one of the most stable vitamins in use. Unlike the fragile ingredient vitamin C, niacinamide is not sensitive to air and light. It won't oxidize with exposure to air and it can withstand relatively high heat without degrading. The main thing to look for with niacinamide in a skincare product is the pH of the formulation. The pH range should be between four to six. And the reason is that outside of this pH range, niacinamide can much more easily become niacin, which is actually irritating to the skin. Niacinamide is great for the skin and you'll find it used in a huge variety of skincare products. Niacinamide helps promote a stronger and more supple skin barrier that combats skin dryness and it's a powerful anti-inflammatory that can calm red and irritated skin. It can also increase collagen production, fight hyperpigmentation, and regulate sebum production to help manage acne. It's one of the very best, one of the most researched and proven ingredients out there. If you want to learn more about niacinamide, please check out the link below for an in-depth paper on how niacinamide actually works. Another huge advantage of niacinamide is that it's usually well tolerated even by those of us with very sensitive skin. If you've experienced irritation from a niacinamide product in the past, it might be that you used a product that was not well formulated. And that led to niacinamide becoming niacin. And niacin is a known skin irritant that causes skin flushing. So the skin reddening is often accompanied by an itching and burning sensation and can be a response to topical niacin or large doses of oral niacin. So an interesting fact, those with schizophrenia are actually often missing this niacin flush response. Those of you who are more science savvy might say, but wait, isn't niacin also a form of vitamin B3? You're correct. If you take it orally, both niacin and niacinamide are forms of vitamin B3 that your body can use. However, as a topical, niacin doesn't cross the stradium corneum, the skin barrier, while niacinamide does. And more importantly, though niacinamide is well tolerated by even those with the most sensitive skin, niacin is a known skin irritant that causes skin flushing in most people. So when it comes to topicals, niacin is the evil cousin of niacinamide that you want to avoid. Now, when you're making a skincare formulation like we do here at Maylove, there is a reason not to combine vitamin C and niacinamide into a single product. Why? So when you put niacinamide in a skincare product where the pH is not properly calibrated, you're much more likely to end up with unwanted niacin. So how do we know this? We can look at a study from Finhol and Higuchi entitled Rate Studies on the Hydrolysis of Niacinamide. Hydrolysis basically means breaking down. So for example, if you buy collagen and it says hydrolyzed collagen, that means it's broken up collagen. Niacinamide hydrolyzes into niacin. If you look at the chart here from the research by Finhol and Higuchi, the lowest point of the rate of niacinamide hydrolysis is between the pH range of four to six. So it seems like five to 5.5 is the sweet spot, which is where we formulated our Nia 10 calming serum, which is a concentrated niacinamide serum. So if you are looking for a niacinamide product, look for products formulated in the range of four to six in pH. Otherwise, you don't need to treat your product too carefully as niacinamide is a very stable ingredient. Click on the link below for the write-up of this video. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thanks and see you next time.